Hi everybody, so in this video we're going to look at the complex roots of cubic and quartic equations. So we know that complex solutions of real polynomials come in conjugate pairs. So if f of z is equal to zero, where z is a complex number, then its complex conjugate f of z star will also equal zero. And we also know that cubic equations have three roots and quartic equations have four roots. So in example one, we're going to look at solving a cubic with complex roots, and in example two, a quartic with complex roots. So in example one, we're given that z equals two is a root of this cubic equation, and you can see that this is a real root. We've been asked to find the value of the other two roots of the equation. So if we say then, now, the function of z is equal to z cubed minus 4z squared plus 6z minus 4. Then we know that f of 2, when z equals 2, is equal to 0. So therefore, z minus 2, using the factor theorem, must be a factor. And if this is a factor, we can use long division to find the quadratic factor. So now we'll divide the z cubed by z and we get z squared. We'll multiply this out and we get z cubed minus 2z squared. The difference in our quadratic terms is negative 2z squared. We'll drop down our linear and our constant. Then we'll divide this negative 2z squared by this z. So we get negative 2z. Then we'll multiply it out again. So negative 2z squared plus 4z, these will cancel, and then the 6z take away from 4z will give us 2z. We'll divide this by z, and we get positive 2. We'll drop down the constant to make negative 4, and then we'll multiply it out again. So 2z minus 4, okay? So we know our quadratic factor will be z squared minus 2z plus 2. And this will equal 0. So now to find the other two factors, we need to solve this equation. And I'm going to use the method of completing the square. So we'll half the negative 2, we get z minus 1. We'll square this, we'll complete the square. Then we'll add back in the 2. We'll move this positive 1 to the right hand side. So z minus 1 will equal negative 1. So we get z minus 1 will equal plus or minus the square root of negative 1. We know that the root of negative 1 is i. And we can move this negative 1 to the right hand side. So we get z is equal to positive 1 plus or minus i. So these would form our other two roots, our complex roots. So we know then that in total, the three roots are z is equal to 2 and z is equal to 1 plus i and its complex conjugate z star is equal to 1 minus i. Okay? So I hope this has given you an idea on how to find the complex roots of cubic equations. In example 2, we're going to look at a quartic equation. Okay, so in example two, we're told that f of z is this quartic equation, and we're given that z is equal to 3 minus 2i is a root of the equation where f of z is equal to 0. And we've been asked to find the other three roots of this equation. So if we go back to what we said earlier, in that the roots occur in complex pairs, we know z1 is 3 minus 2i, and z2 will be the complex conjugate of z1, 3 plus 2i. And now we can use these two roots to find the quadratic factor of this quartic equation. If you remember from a previous video, looking at quadratic roots, well, if we've got roots alpha and beta, in this case, z1 and z2, then we can write a quadratic as z minus alpha multiplied by z minus beta 
is equal to zero. And we can expand this out. So z squared minus alpha plus beta plus alpha beta, sorry, z plus alpha beta will equal zero. So we can work out the quadratic factor by adding these two roots together to work out this term and multiplying them together to work out the constant term. So alpha plus beta will be z1 plus z2, 3 minus 2i plus 3 plus 2i. The two i's will cancel. So alpha plus beta will be 6. And then the constant term, alpha beta, will be the product of these roots. So 3 minus 2i multiplied by 3 plus 2i. We can expand this out. We get 3 times 3, which is 9. And then we get the negative 2i times positive 2i, which will be negative 4i squared, which we know is negative 4 times negative 1, so plus 4. So this will be 13. So what this tells us then is that our quadratic factor will be z squared minus 6z plus 13. And this will equal zero. So this is our first quadratic factor. And we can use the method of equating terms to find our second quadratic factor. So we know z squared minus 6z plus 13 multiplied by another quadratic. So in its general form, az squared plus bz plus c will be equal to our quartic z to the 4 minus 3z cubed minus 15z squared plus 99z minus 130. Okay, so now we can equate terms. We know this z to the 4, we can only get by multiplying z squared by this az squared. So a times z to the 4, we know must be equal to z to the 4. We can cancel out the z to the fourths, so we know that a must be equal to one. Our cubic term, we can only get for multiplying the z squared by the z, and this a z squared by negative six z. So negative six a z cubed plus z squared multiplied by b z, so b z cubed must equal negative 3z cubed. We'll cancel out with z cubed. And we know that a is 1, so we'll cancel this out as well. So therefore, negative 6 plus b must be equal to negative 3. So b must be equal to positive 3. And to work out this constant term, we need to consider the negative 130. Because we can only get this when we multiply this 13 by the constant c. So 13c will equal negative 130, c must equal negative 10. So now we've got a, b and c, we can find our other quadratic factor, which is z squared plus 3z minus 10. And again, this will equal zero. And we can factorize this quadratic into two real roots. So we get z plus 5 multiplied by z minus 2. So z will equal negative 5 and z will equal positive 2. Okay, so finally, our four roots. Well, z1, we were told, is equal to 3 minus 2i. Z2, 3 plus 2i. Z3 negative 5 and z4 positive 2 okay well thank you very much for watching i hope you found that useful if you did find that helpful please like and subscribe and you can download the full lesson and worksheet from my website mrmathematics.com there's a link in the description below thanks again and take care